Hi everyone, I hope the afternoon is treating you guys well and you're in conference room two right now and we're going to hear a conference titled Trick or Treat, Unveil the Spratum of the Mining Pool. So if this is not what you were expecting, now is a good time to head to room one. Uh, our presenters today are Emilien de Gentel. He's a security analyst for CERT EU since four years and also responsible for oh, monitoring and hunting activities in CERT EU. And Jana Andrada Todirica, uh, she's working in Brussels for the CERT EU as an IT security administrator, previously working as an IT systems administrator for the Romanian Ministry of Defense, and uh, passionate about information technology. I will let you go in depth into your background. I don't want to steal your thunder. So without further ado. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here for a talk. Uh, so we'll talk about crypto miners, so crypto mining malware or mining malware. I don't know which word you prefer for that. And we'll speak especially about uh, the stratum mining protocol. And uh, yeah. So my name is Emilien Jamtel. Uh, I'm a security analyst in Certiu. I used to be a pen tester, uh, so more for red team activities. I also work in the threat intelligence team in Certu, but now I'm, after a small time as an incident responder, I'm now responsible for everything related to threat hunting and uh, monitoring uh, of our SOC. I'm Jana Todorica. I'm from Romania. For those who uh, don't know about Romania, Romania is a really small country in Europe, <laughs> known as uh, Dracula's land or the, the, the house of uh, the vampires. I. Uh, <laughs> I um, worked previously for the Romanian army as a system administrator and like um, the last three years I moved to Brussels to work uh, as a security administrator for CERTU. Um, okay, so a uh, mandatory slide about what we are, what we do. Uh, so CERTU is a computer emergency response team, CERT of the European institutions, bodies and agencies. So it means that it goes from European Parliament, European Commission, to small agencies um, like the mitigation agencies, the transport agencies. So our constituents are around 60 plus uh, different organizations. That's very interesting, uh, let's say, work environment because we have different maturity level between our constituents. So we can have very small entity, big one with their own security team. And so it's pretty cool to, to work there uh, in Certu and to help the European institutions to get protected against cyber threat. Uh, so what we do is more or less what every search are doing. Uh, so it go from incident handling, uh, which is uh, the team I part of. Uh, we have very good uh, threat intelligence team. We have some developers also to help us on the automation and task. And Joanna is part of what we call extended services, which is uh, some kind of infrastructure team, plus red team, plus vulnerability assessment, plus a lot of stuff. Um, that uh, we so we actually provide more services to our constituents, like helping them deploy sensors and stuff like that. Okay, but now let's jump on the real topic. So, crypto mining malware is always something. I mean, it's really on the rise since more than two years. Uh, it actually kind of replaced uh, ransomware attacks. So now it's actually more profitable for a threat actor to infect machine and have them mining for them instead of uh, trying to run some people. Um, and the thing is, we often have people asking us, uh, okay, but the price of bitcoins and other crypto currency is actually crashing, so uh, is it still a thing? And if you look at the news just last week, uh, Sven Macro released a blog post about uh, vulnerability of Confluence being exploited, and then they were installing some crypto miners there in order to mine some Monero. And if I look at the analysis we are doing, I see more and more samples. So the thing is for threat actors, if the price goes down, just infect more machine, and then you will still make money. And I mean, it's free money, it's not your infrastructure, so it's cool. Uh, the other thing is, it's pretty easy to deploy. You have a lot of proof of concept code online on GitHub, on Passbin, I mean, very basic scripts. So you find a vulnerability, uh, which is not patched. You use services uh, to actually find uh, vulnerable services. You deploy your, you do your exploit, you deploy your script, and then you start mining and making money out of uh, other people's infrastructure. So the thing is, uh, what we want to do is to be able to detect uh, crypto mining activities ins inside of our network. And so for that, we will use something which is specific to crypto mining. For mining activity is that most people, most miner will actually do not do solo mining, but they will use mining pools. So I will quickly explain, um, I mean, very basic explanation of a mining pool. 
So you have these mining pool servers, so usually you have a website and then you have uh, different services uh, which will actually communicate with the blockchain. Every participant will actually connect to the mining pool and participate to the proof of work in order to generate, um, to, to find some blocks and to generate rewards. And based on the participation of each entity to the mining pool, they will kind of divide the, the, the reward to the different participants. And the thing is that it can be any type of device. It can be smartphone, it can be laptop, it can be servers. I mean, you can mine on any devices, especially that you have some uh, cryptocurrencies which are kind of not depending on used GPU, so they can be mined with a very small CPU, so even a device. And what we'll speak here is about crypto mining malware. There is another kind of crypto jacking activity, which is leveraging uh, JavaScript in browser, but that's not what we'll speak about today. We will speak about malware infecting machine and having them participating to the mining activity of a mining pool. So, to actually distribute the job between the different um, participants, the mining pool will use a protocol called Stratum. So Stratum uh, was released in 2012, and it was replacing uh, an obsolete uh, protocol called GetWork, which was based on HTTP. And so it's way more efficient. It's basically a JSON RPC protocol, so it's just TCP connect, you send a JSON, receive a JSON, and then you distribute your work like that. And it's good because in most cases, it's unencrypted. Not always, but in 99% of cases, uh, people are too lazy to put SSL on. So that's cool for us. Okay. So uh, what we did or work was to actually try to identify Stratum servers on internet. So meaning the configuration which is needed by the miner in order to connect to the mining pool. And because that's the only way for them to participate to the pool, we want to see exactly where they connect, which port, uh, is it using SSL or not, but mostly domains IP port, that's what we want. So we developed four different strategies to do that. The first one will be to process some malicious samples and to extract configuration from them. The second one will use to use some search engine in order to find directly servers, uh, but also to extracting from the mining pool websites the configuration they use uh, for the Stratum protocol. And finally, we'll speak about, about actually scanning the internet at the end. Oh, and we have some snort rules. Uh, it's available on uh, our GitHub account. You will have the link at the end of the presentation, so yeah. Okay, so uh, crypto analysis of, of samples. So we have different strategy to capture. The first step is to capture some samples. I capture something like 20,000 unique samples uh, since more than a year, something like that. So we have different sources. It can be from a malware repository like Virus Total for example, or online sandboxes, uh, like any run, uh, hybrid analysis, all those kind of um, open sandboxes that you can use, but also from internal incidents that we manage at CERTU. And in order to identify interesting samples for us, we will use uh, Yara rule, we will uh, use a uh, list of interesting domains, list of interesting behavior, uh, like which we reference uh, either the Stratum protocol itself or uh, wallet addresses. So wallet addresses is when you want to get paid uh, in Monero, in Bitcoin, you provide your wallet address to somebody. The thing is that most mining pool will actually use a wallet address for authentication to their pool. That's pretty cool. So it's very long string. Uh, so I have nice regular expression uh, in Yara rules to detect actually existence of those, um, of those address in samples. And so I know that something interesting will be on the other side. Uh, something else which I will go into details in the next slides, is the use of specific mining software. So, people are lazy. You have very good tools which exist to do the mining. The most well-known is XMRig. So most uh, threat actor will just embed the miner itself, so the software doing the mining, inside of the, inside of the malware they will uh, deploy in the infected, uh, infected target, and they will just make it run. So if I see reference to those specific tools, I know that that's probably something related to crypto mining. So the workflow to analyze them, it's more or less fully automated. I mean, with some bugs, of course. I mean, it's Python script, so. Uh, so I take those samples and I try to decode it as much as I can. So for example, I will look for base 64 encoded block inside of the samples, I will decode them. Uh, sometimes it's not encoded at all, and sometimes it's uh, packed. So for those cases, I use open source tools, uh, mostly uh, Red Deck Decompiler, uh, which was released a year or something ago, and for 32-bit samples, and Snowman for 64-bit. 
The thing is that last month, the developer of Red Deck announced that now they are supporting 64-bit uh, samples for Intel, uh, Intel architecture. So I think I will use it more because I prefer the output of some other and they have some kind of um, unpacking, embedded unpacking uh, functionality, which is pretty, pretty cool for us. So then I'm using Yara rules. Uh, so to actually find some specific um, pattern inside of the file, and I'm looking for two main things. The first thing is the mining software they are using. So is it XM ring, is it CPU miner, things like that. And also reference to configuration files. I mean, how they will actually configure the miner to start participating with, uh, with the mining pool. And finally, I have a shitload of regular expression, uh, more or less correctly written, in order to extract those configuration, parsing it with some kind of uh, Python script to actually make it compliant and then store everything that I'm interested in into a JSON file. Uh, okay, so you don't have to read everything. Uh, I will highlight some stuff. It's just to show you that uh, what we did is we uh, did an inventory of all the most used uh, mining software uh, that we can find in samples. How they started, because you are usually two way of starting the mining process. Either it's having a command line when you will specify the stratum server you want to communicate with, or a configuration file. So if you take XMRIC, for example, uh, so you so that's basically on Windows, or you start the mining process. So you have this like usage you want to use. So 85% you will not put. Oh, it happened. Uh, <laughs> not put 100 because you don't want the machine to be completely killed and then everybody will figure out, everybody will figure out something's happening. In this case, 85% is already kind of tricky. I mean, if you start doing that on web servers, it may have issues. Uh, and the minus O will specify the stratum server you want to connect to with the port. And the minus U is the wallet address. Uh, the other way around is to actually use a config file, so it's a JSON format, so when you will specify the URL of the pool with the port, and then the, the wallet address you want to use for authentication. Um, so, some samples are packed, obfuscated, so we are not necessarily capable to ex extract directly the configuration, so then we have other strategies. Um, so we're not going into too much details to those, uh, a bit more on the network capture, but what we do, we just send them into sandboxes, or we look for actually online sandboxes which actually executed the sample. I will extract the sandbox report, so you have interesting stuff like uh, command line executed on the machine, uh, which kind of IP it's uh, connected on which port and stuff like that. So we will actually extract from those sandbox report the data we want. But also some sandbox, especially the one we are running internally, give us a possibility to get memory dumps. So for that, we will use vol volatility with the same Yara rule we were using previously on our static analysis to identify which process is actually doing the mining. And then I will use exactly the same technique from the unpacked malware in memory. So then I don't have to start uh, doing some reverse engineering to just get stratum address. So that's pretty efficient. And finally, uh, we can have a network capture. And so we have those nice pickups. And I will explain a bit um, more how the Stratum protocol works to show you how easy it is to extract the information from a pickup. So it's basically, I have my infected laptop, it will initiate a JSON RPC request to the Stratum server with the IP and the port or the domain and the port. And then the Stratum server will just give it back like, okay, so welcome to the pool. That's your job. Please send me the result when you have it. So the login request looks like that. Uh, so it's just a login, uh, the pass X, may look at I, I a password, but actually 80, 90% of cases, mining pool do not check the passwords. So, I mean, why? If you want to participate, just participate. I mean, I don't care. And uh, we have the user agent, which is pretty cool. And uh, okay, so that's, that's a basic stuff. Uh, so the answer looks like that. So the, the Stratum server say, hey, okay, cool, uh, welcome. That's your job, uh, that's the job ID. Uh, that's the blob you need to analyze, and that's the target you need to reach. Once it's done, give me back the result. I will compile it with the rest of the participants, and if we find a block, then we will get part of the reward. So we have the port, we have the IP, because we identify, I mean, the, the, the packets uh, which are containing those specific uh, JSON uh, RPC requests uh, in your pickup, and I just have to look back into the DNS query which was made uh, by uh, the sample in the sandbox to identify actually the domain attached to the IP I previously identified. So, 
Okay, so for this part, I will give the floor to Johanna, which will speak about the next strategy we use to identify for search. Okay, so Emilian talked about having the samples already. We would like to find what's online there, what's uh, already active. So as he talked before, nowadays mining by yourself, it's not pretty efficient in the end. Like, uh, yeah, it's really hard to mine your own block until you get it, it takes a lot of time. So what we're planning to, to do is just to scan them over the internet um, using services like Onif, Census, Shodan to look for those uh, stratum servers or mining pools which might contain configuration of the stratum servers. For um, those who don't really know what are those uh, search engines that I'm talking about, like Onif, Census, or Shodan, those are like um, search engines which are uh, mapping all the connected devices to the internet and they're gathering information um, about them, about services, protocols. They have different filters, depend on wh uh, what uh, are your needs. Um, you can get the results through their API. For us, we just needed, um, we search only for basic keywords. We didn't need to filter like on, um, on other stuff. We just wanted to look after specific uh, stratum uh, protocol, so. Okay, so initially we wanted to look for stratum servers which are already, al already there online. And um, we've done this through, we found it like s some standard messages. For example, if you, um, if you do a request, they res respond with like mining server is online. This is a standar standard message which um, a Stratum server will say, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a Stratum server waiting for you to, to connect. Uh, another interesting case, you will see like, um, they will respond with their, in their HTTP header with X Stratum, where you'll have the, the configuration, as you can see here, like Stratum plus TCP, you'll have the configuration of the Stratum server where, where you can connect. Uh, Emilian talked also about the um, uh, XMRig binar. Um, the XRE miner has the, you can enable the HTTP um, API. So for example, if you search on those uh, engines, it will give um, the configuration of the miner. So for example, you can see there in the connection, there's the pool which gives you exactly the stratum server you're, where you're supposed to connect to start uh, mining. And another one which we identify is this Ethereum stratum proxy, which is, um, a transition between the um, old protocol, get, uh, GetWalk, uh, to, the, to the new one. So um, those were like um, scanning directly on the, um, on the internet for Stratum servers. Now what we want to is to identify the mining pool online, which might contain the configuration of other Stratum servers. So uh, we found like common keywords for basic pools like mining pools, top 10 miners. If you search for those, you, you'll find plenty. But also we identified, I would say like uh, here around five um, mining frameworks, I would say, which are open source and they are available on, I think all of them are on GitHub. And you can install it by yourself. It, you, you, I like, in many cases, you don't need much knowledge of it. It's pretty, pretty simple, uh, simple to do it. So what we uh, went to, we uh, tried to see the, what's specific for each type of pool and to extract the configuration of the, of the Stratum server. Uh, on this one, we used the scanning services to extract the um, uh, pool website, but also we used, you can find online, um, websites which, have, uh, which are listing the mining pool. So we exactly extracted the URL from there and we just uh, parsed it and checked if they apply to to our searches. So we found around three uh, basic techniques of, um, of extracting those mining pools that I was uh, talking about. So the first one is like node crypto node and node JS pools. They're like um, used for uh, uh, most, um, mostly for crypto node uh, coins. And the interesting thing you go, you just parse the HTML page and then just, just look for a configuration file. What's really interesting about it, in the configuration file, you'll find the API, which you can connect, and you'll just, as you can see here, you can take the pool host directly and the port. 
So basically, we found the configuration of a Stratum server. So what we're doing, we're gathering those, um, those details and for later to see if they're gonna be um, online and if they're available for mining. For Node.js, there's like a slight difference. The, um, the configuration file is called different. It's like global.js. And uh, when you uh, do the API call, it's, uh, it's not slash stats, it's just pool, um, and I think it's support, something like this. But as, as a method, it's, uh, yeah, you just parse the file, you look after a configuration file, and then, then you just co connect to the API call and uh, you take uh, your data. For those ones, like NOMP and open Ethereum pool, we, it wasn't that straightforward, I would say, like, they have an API, but they don't have the, the, the data that we're looking after. So what we are doing, we're connecting to the, to the page and trying to, okay, we've done some engineers, some regex around to, to steal the port and the, um, the IP or the, um, the name of the pool host. Uh, for the open Ethereum pool, it's a pool only for the Ethereum uh, mining. So, um, if it's not, um, it's a bit more straightforward. For example, I don't have to search for the port either. It's like, you have to search for Stratum port and Stratum host, you'll have them there. It's much easier to, you know, to, to go and search for it. Here, it was a bit complicated, yeah, to engineer some regex which will uh, filter the, the data. Okay, this is like uh, the, the last technique that we identified and I think it was one of the, which required a lot of uh, parsing in the background. So we have um, this imp pool, which basically in, a, in its page, it will give you um, how to configure your miner and to, like it will give you, okay, I, we need to, um, the stratum server is there, you just need to replace like uh, the port and the algorithm that uh, that you want to put. So basically, initially, I'm um, filtering the first uh, the first page, and uh, I'm taking the stratum plus TCP. Then I'm doing a call into the um, uh, page, then to find the API. Then after I find the API, I'll uh, get the um, the algorithm name and the port. So I'm extracting there, and in the end, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just have the, the final um, stratum configuration. What is interesting on this one, you, um, on big um, mining pools I've se of uh, like types of uh, imp, we've seen that they might uh, mine um, on the same port more coins or on the same algorithm, um, but on different ports. So it depends on the configuration that they initially, initially have, I guess. Okay, so, we gather all the all the data. What are we gonna do with this one? Because you know, that's that's a lot of data. So we wrote a scanner in which we wanted to to see. Okay, if I'm gonna send a job to the server, let's see if it's gonna respond um, or not in the end. So we identified like two responses. We have like either an error, which okay, it will say we we create we crafted a message which is like you know buggy. There's just a random pass or nothing like uh, real there. But the funny part, as Emiliano was saying, we just, res if you look on the second one, on the job, we just received the job. So you just uh, take and, okay, you, you can start mining. So a few statistics about um, the data that we, we, we collected in the end. So we identified around 8,000 stratum servers uh, yesterday morning, I think it, that's when we scanned them last time, we had around 4,000 live servers. Um, you can see here that like only 1,000 unique IP hosting. Well, as I said to you earlier, on the same IP you might host uh, different type of coins on different ports, but the IP is the same. Um, also, like I would say a good indicator of compromise, it's most uh, like a, a good one, it, it's coming from the sample analyze, which, you know, they're like, the ones which you know, they're like malicious in, in the end. So yeah, those are my, the most reliable, I, I would say. And yeah, okay, the rest we had like 6,000 for mining pool extraction, which, yeah, it's not pretty bad compared to, <laughs> to, the, to the rest that we found directly uh, in the end. 
Okay, then there's one thing here, you can see like unique domains, there are like a lot of them. If you compare, okay, we found only 1,000, well, why do we have uh, 12,000 unique domains? So, Emilian will tell you more about this one. Okay. Is it working? Not uh, yet. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so uh, as Jana said, um, we have those samples uh, which were I would not say malicious, but we know that those mining pools has been used by malicious samples. So it's not that the mining itself is malicious, but we know that we identified specific samples which will use those specific mining pools uh, once infected machine. So this 11,000 stuff, it comes from one simple trick that we've seen uh, being used by a lot uh, of uh, malicious actor is they will actually register a domain name pointing to the proper IP address of a mining pool without actually telling the owner of the mining pool. Some people will use, uh, you, you have some available uh, domains uh, of mining pools, for example, so you will look in your DNS logs, in your proxy logs, if you have connections to those specific domains, not necessarily looking for IPs. So in order to be undetected, what they will do is say, okay, I will just register this totally random domain and make it point to this specific IP address. So then your DNS-based detection is totally useless. So that's why by doing passive DNS, passive SSL, uh, looking in search engine, like Bing have a functionality when you can do some kind of uh, passive DNS uh, query. Uh, and also through the sample analysis, we identified that a lot of those stuff. So for example, the CryptoPool.fr, which is one of the biggest uh, mining pool online for uh, Monero um, cryptocurrencies, uh, actually have a very cool and funny domain registered to this IP, like this video pornoazo.com or uh, test, te test SQE, or I don't know. So those guys were kind of imaginative in order to hide behind it. We have some false positive, especially if you have this kind of share IP hosting services, uh, like uh, OVH or sometimes Amazon is doing. Like, uh, But at the end, well, what we'll do, we will retest with those specific domains, with our scanner, to see if it's actually, it's, it actually can be used to start the mining process. Um, so some of the data we decided to take out of it was, okay, is there a default port? Because we are looking at the documentation about those, um, about those mining pool open source projects, and I think NOMP had some kind of default port configured, which was 5555, I think. But most of the others do not have that. And so we started looking. So if you look on the left side, say, okay, it's quite distributed. There is nothing very specific. But you can see that uh, there is this kind of four times the same digit, like 3333, uh, 5555, 7, 7, 7, blah, blah, blah. So I'm, my idea is that people are lazy, and you know, they have to configure the stuff, and okay, uh, four, eight, okay four times the same stuff. Uh, and it works, I mean, why not? So we did another uh, statistics based on all the ports, so it's not just based on the top 10, but uh, all of the ports we identified. And we can see that roughly more than one third of them is using these four times the same digit. And also you have sometimes some deviation. So for example, if you have two type of coins that you mine, or if you have two type of difficulty you want to mine on the same coin, the first one, it will be 4444, four, 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 and then say, okay, let's change for the second one because I cannot use the same one, 4445, four, four, then 4446. Four, four, and so we observe that we have also a lot of those as I call it there, there uh, X, 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 Y. Uh, some guys will also use HTTP standard port, 80, 80, 80, 443, in order to hide behind, um, behind legitimate traffic. And the others, I mean, yeah, we have very different stuff, but we have some kind of patterns there. So, uh, so we work, uh, I work with Patrice Offret, uh, which is a French security researcher working for ONIF. And actually, I provided him a payload, which is more or less the Python script we developed uh, for the scanning. And I asked him, okay, um, can you check on all those four times the same digit port if you see Stratum mining protocol? So he's sending the JSON, looking at the answer. And uh, so when I checked this morning, no, yesterday, yesterday evening, we identified 1,600 1, something. Uh, but the thing is, the scan is still ongoing, uh, so we'll probably get more. So once he tell me that the uh, first scanning is done, then I will integrate those IPs into our list and to see if there is like deduplication and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. And uh, so there you have an example, for example, of uh, a server he found. Um, so something pretty cool here is 
you see the error message, invalid payment address provided now. It's because that's the fake uh, login I'm sending to the mining pool. So some of them answer by responding with my um, uh, fake bogus uh, authentication result. And the interesting part is some of them actually do not care about authentication. Hmm? Uh, yeah, yeah, but the thing is that I, I request, by scanning them, I request a job, but I will never answer because I'm just sending a digital PC getting the answer, but I'm, I actually never do the job. And that's something I didn't test because it's a bit offensive, would be to actually take one of those mining pool which do not care about authentication and spam them with job requests. Uh, I don't know if it will drop there. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, that's something I didn't test because I'm not really allowed to do that offensive stuff against people. So <laughs> we have regulation in Europe and stuff like that. Uh, okay. So my boss, uh, so the head of the Responding, tells me, uh, okay, it's really cool. You do research, you find stuff, so please now make it actually usable. Uh, so there is some way we actually uh, use this data to detect or block mining activities uh, in a you constituent. Know, so on IDS, IPS level, for example, uh, we will uh, use the list of domains and IPs. We also have the SNORT rule we developed, so that we deploy, so in order to detect such activity. We can also use domain and IP on proxy level and on DNS level as well in order to see if we have connection to those specific domains and IPs that we identified. And finally, based on the work we did um, uh, for analyzing the static analysis of the sample, uh, we developed a list of malicious hashes, of course, and also specific command lines. So for that, I don't know if you know Sigma. I mean, you may look on it if you want, but we have some kind of pattern of command lines they are using to start the mining process. So if I detect an endpoint of a server running a lookalike command line, which look like a mining process it started, then I can generate alert on my sim. And also we have Yara rule when we do a wipe, uh, I mean a swipe of uh, all of our workstation for one of our constituents, uh, we will actually use some Yara rules we developed to get new samples to see actually if we have uh, such sample already installed in one of our constituents. We're using MISP as well to share with uh, our constituents and our partner. If you don't know MISP, you should. Uh, it's pretty cool. So it's an open source project to exchange um, uh, indicator of compromise and analysis with uh, your peers. So you can get like, for example, here we have the hashes of the files we identified. We also put the wallet address. Uh, and actually, Rafael Vino, Vino from Circle, which is one of the guys developing MISP, uh, added new tags for a very specific uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, so you have, uh, so you can do correlation inside of it. Uh, we also put the domain, even if they are not malicious by themselves, but they can be a good indicator to detect that something malicious is happening in your network. Uh, so I will let Joanna. Working? Okay. <laughs> I think it's uh, something. Okay. Uh, what's our plan for for the future? So um, we would like to dig more into the pool extraction technique. I have to say that we started with uh, two big mining pools and then we reached to five. And uh, I think the last one was, was bringing the most results. So I think we, if we'll go and continue, we'll for sure we'll discover um, other mining pools which will uh, get us more stratum servers. Also, one of the things that Emilian talked about MISP, we need to uh, really uh, integrate it with um, Mitre attack and um, do a proper tagging and correlation on the, on the events that we're having there. And one thing which, um, yeah, we're really working on it is to have a better automation of what we're doing. Okay, we're having like uh, scripts, but they should look, uh, you know, better than, and um, trying to improve and make, uh, you know, do regular scanning without um, human, human interaction, I would say. And also it would be good to have like a storage of the historical data to be able to do some statistic on it and see what's the trend and how, um, how the things are gonna go um, for, for the future. Do we still have some time? Ah, oh, okay, good, so. Uh, Bonus time. Yes. <laughs> Too fast. So one interesting stuff that we found during our search, while we're using the scanning ser services for um, XM rig, 
miner, as I remember. We found those uh, those Docker um, uh, boxes and we're like wondering mm, what what what's about them. So we've seen that they're listening on on port two three seven five. And if you look closely to it, okay, it looks like a, an image which uh, is yeah okay. It it's, looks like an image which contains a Monero miner, which the first one li looks pretty legit. Okay, you have a, um, a miner there already configured. You don't care. But the second one, it's it's a little bit um, looks a, a little bit weird, sus suspicious, I would say. So yeah, for the, for the first one, okay, you can see that you can um, you set your miner, you can uh, uh, as you can see, you can uh, uh, see the the domain of the Stratum server and the port where you can mine the password, whatever. But on the second one, it's yeah, it looks a bit. Um, Fishy. Why would you put it encoded? Like, why would you want to be like this? So, the moment we we try to decode it, yeah, we discovered yes, it's still a um, um, it's it's a miner who's uh, yeah sending um, some requests to a to a valid uh, Stratum server. So, the thing is, we didn't have yet to explore it, but what if they are exploiting like Docker um, API, like for the stations which are not properly patched? And just you know, sending, um, uh, infecting random uh, uh, Docker stations just uh, yeah because uh, they found it um, easy to to be exploitable. So we're not really sure yet about it, but yeah, we're we're thinking this uh, this might be a suspicious case. Like, why would you put it in an encoded format uh, in the end if you if you have a legitimate uh, legitimate image? Okay, uh, let Emilian to, uh, uh, he has a nice example about uh, um, XM ring yeah. minor uh, okay. in the end. Yes, okay, so uh, we analyzed a lot of samples. Uh, sometimes we find something cool, so we look uh, a bit more into it, and that's a trick I've seen used uh, several times. And I really like it, uh, because it means that we are not the only one doing threat intelligence. Um, so you have the partial version uh, on the left and the bash version on the right. So what those guys are doing is they will kill processes based on specific name or specific strings, like IP addresses, uh, wallet addresses, uh, reference to the stratum mining protocol before starting the miner. So what those guys are doing is they are scanning internet for, let's say, vulnerable web logic server. Okay, They connect there and they kill everything they know about competitors, and then they start the mining process probably for two days or let's say 20 minutes maybe before somebody else do the same. You know? and <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, thank you for the indicators, uh, I would say, because uh, then I can integrate them into my search intelligence database. Um, but I really like the trick that you know, those guys know that if they want to make money, they have to, to beat the others. And uh, so it was a very cool trick. Um, so another very cool sample. So Okay, I will speak a little bit about the uh, MITRE attack framework. Uh, there were a presentation about it this, this morning, yeah. Uh, so, persistence mechanism. I found this very cool sample. You have the hash uh, on the back. I will, uh, the slide will be shared. You can take a look. Uh, which actually had three different persistence mechanisms. So, once it infects the machine, it will actually create a schedule task, then use WMI uh, so, uh, to subscribe events in order to uh, create another persistence, and then it will actually uh, register itself in a registry run keys. So I don't know why they need three, because I guess if they are detected once, the other will be cleaned as well, but the guy really wanted to be sure to stay there, even if the guys infect the machine as well. So it was pretty cool case, and that's where the, um, the tagging uh, with a MITRE attack framework could be very cool, because then you can kind of highlight automatically those kind of very strange samples, and which looks cool when you do a presentation. And uh, I think that's it for us. Um, so we have the code repository, uh, where we have most of the code. Uh, we are still in the oh. phase of uh, cleaning a bit of it, uh, like removing our coded API keys and stuff like that. And uh, also we will find the full papers that we submitted uh, to NorthSec uh, to get accepted to the conference um, on this GitHub repo, so expect maybe in the next few days, uh, middle of next week, to have all the codes we actually produce to be put there and properly cleaned and maybe documented. <laughs> maybe. We're doing our best. 